Okay, so the lab that we're doing today is the chemical weathering lab. Now, weathering in general um, takes place best uh, in humid climates because most types of weathering uh, work better or work entirely uh, with the water um, for frost action. You need water to freeze to make the ice to make frost action for um, root action. Well, plants need water. So if you don't have any water, don't have any plants, don't have any plants, don't have any uh, root action. Uh, abrasion can take place with wind, but it takes place best in the water. Uh, and chemical weathering, uh, dissolving, you know, you need water to dissolve things. Um, today we're going to focus on chemical weathering, so basically dissolving stuff. And what we want to do is seeing um, what kind of climate, with, with humid, is going to be a warm humid climate or a cold humid climate, uh, is going to be the type of climate that produces uh, greater chemical weathering. And to do that, what we're going to see is how chemical weathering takes place at three different temperatures. All right? And what we're going to be chemically weathering is rock salt. So what we want to see is how different temperatures of water, um, how, how it affects how fast rock salt is going to be chemically weathered. So what we're going to do is we're going to take equal amounts of rock salt and I'm going to pour them into three different containers of water. And what's still going to be different about the containers is you're going to have three different, you're going to have equal amounts of water, but the water is going to be at different temperatures. Right? And I'm going to pour equal amounts of rock salt in there, going to stir it, and then see how long it takes the rock salt to dissolve. Right? So, I'm uh, going to start off with right here. This is just regular tap water. It's regular old tap water I pulled out. Right. Um, over here, I have some ice cubes, so I'm going to get some water, it's going to be close to ice uh, temperature, and I have some water that's been heating up in this, um, this uh, teapot on a hot plate, so that's going to be the hot water. So the, um, I'm going to do the hot water one uh, first, okay. so it's not going to be super hot. Okay. <clears throat> so if you look at the direction, it says measure out 300 milliliters of water. All right. So All right, so let's see what the temperature is. Don't want to make it too hot. All right, because so we're going to try to make conditions like you'd have it on Earth. And right now the water's oh about 80 degrees Celsius, which is too hot. So I'm going to cut it with some regular temperature water, room temperature water. And put it a little bit more. Ice cube. All right. All right, so I got the temperature down to All right, so here's my warm water right here. All right. Uh, next, what I'm going to need is I'm going to need uh, 40 grams of rock salt. So here's my triple beam balance. I'm going to set this to 40. Put the paper on it and actually I'm going to adjust it here first. All right. All 
right, and then it was set to 40. All right, so here's my rock salt. All right, so here's my 40 grams of rock salt. And here's my 300 milliliters of water. Right. So again, I take the temperature of the water and I see the temperature of the water uh, is pretty much right at, uh, it's right at 50 degrees Celsius. So right at 50 degrees Celsius. All right. And here's my timer. And what I'm going to do is take the salt. I'm going to dump the salt in there. And I'm going to start stirring. And what I want to do is see how long it takes those 40 grams of salt to completely dissolve. All right, so it's completely dissolved, and the amount of time it took is two minutes and 30 seconds. All right. So for a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius, it took two minutes, 30 seconds. All right. Next, all right. Next up, have some water here. Mix in a little bit of the warmer stuff.
All right, so we'll come back to that in a minute here. Uh, what I need to do, again, is measure out 40 grams of salt. All right, so I got 40 grams of salt in there. Take my temperature of my water now. And the temperature of the water here is just about 35 degrees Celsius. So this one's 35 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm going to dump the water, dump the salt in and then start stirring. Now it's really important is as I'm stirring it, uh, when you do an experiment you try to uh, make it so there's only one variable that you're studying. All right? And the variable that we're studying here is what effect the temperature has on how it dissolves. All right? So as a result, um, you have to try to keep the other parts of the experiment the same. So one variable that um, sometimes people um, kind of slack on is when, when you're doing this, you need to try to stir at the same speed for all, the, uh, for all three of the uh, experiments here. Um, because if I, if I was doing it really fast for one of them and doing it slower for the other one, I wouldn't know if there was a difference in time because I was stirring at different speeds or there was a difference in time because of the difference in temperatures. So we want to keep it so the only thing different about them is the, that there's a difference in temperature. So we try to stir it at pretty much the same speed that you did last time. So we got a few of them in there, not dissolved yet. All right, so the amount of time just <clears throat> was for this one, three minutes and 25 seconds. 
right? So at 35 degrees Celsius, the salt took three minutes and 25 seconds to um, dissolve. Now the last one we're going to do here is the coldest one, and So it looks like temperature I want, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So what I need to do again is I need to measure out 40 grams of salt. All right, so there's my 40 grams of salt. Again, the temperature here of the water is 15 degrees Celsius. So my temperature here is 15 degrees Celsius. All right. So if you notice, I made the temperatures so they're not, that they're, that they're significantly different apart. So I didn't do like 50, 45, 40, because you would probably wouldn't have seen that much of a difference. So I made them at least 15 degrees apart. So you can see more of a difference. All right, so this one's 15 degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Reset. I'm gonna take the salt, dump it in here, stir it, and start stirring. So again, uh, I wanna to try to make it so I'm stirring at the same speed as I did for the other two. Because again, I'm trying to make it so the only thing different about the experiment uh, would be the temperature of the water. Because sometimes when you do this experiment with a group, uh, what happens is one person will do like the first um, temperature and they have kind of like their set speed then they say hey and they have their partner do the other one but their partner really wasn't paying attention too much about how fast the first person was doing it and they do it at a completely different speed so you might end up with results that aren't perfect but here since I'm doing all three of them myself I'll have a good idea of how fast I was spinning it for all three of them so it should be pretty close
right, so this got to the two minute 30 mark and there's still a fair amount of salt left. So 230 is how much the 50 degree, uh, well, 50 degree water took to dissolve the salt. So it's still got a fair amount left. coming up on the 3 minute and 30 second uh, time limit, which is about how much it took 35 degree water to dissolve. And again, still have a fair amount of salt left. So we know it's going to take more than the 35 degree. All right, and that pretty much does it right there. So four minutes and 45 seconds for that one. Four minutes and 45 seconds for that last one. <clears throat> so what you should notice then is that uh, the cooler temperature takes more time to dissolve or another way of looking at it, the warmer the temperature is, the less time it takes to dissolve. So the, the uh, rock weathers faster, it chemically weathers faster, it dissolves faster at warmer temperatures. So what that tells you then is in a warm, wet climate, chemical weathering is more dominant. All right, chemical weathering is more dominant in a warm, wet climate because rocks dissolve faster, they chemically weather faster, um, in a humid climate when it's warmer. All right. Now the next thing you're gonna to have to do with this information is on the next page of the lab, you have a graph. And now this graph's a little different than most graphs that we make. And how this graph is a little different than most graphs that we make, most of the time in graphs, um, time is on the x-axis and whatever you're measuring is on the, the y-axis because normally like you're taking a temperature reading every minute um, so you know what the time's going to be uh, what you don't know is like what the temperature would be all right um, but this one's a little different because in this case we knew what the temperatures were what we did not know is how much time it was going to take for this salt to dissolve. So in this graph here, temperature is going to go on the bottom. In this case, temperature is the um, independent variable. We knew what the temperatures were going to be. What we did not know was how much time was going to go by. All right? Uh, so you're going to want to plot your points with temperature on the bottom with and time on the side. And then when you plot your points, you want to make a line graph. So you're going to plot your three points, then connect those three points with the line. Uh, once you have your graph done, then you can answer the questions. 
um, based on the results of your experiment here, your graph, and uh, some of the notes and stuff that we've taken on chemical weathering throughout the year. All right, so that is the chemical weathering lab.